Alrighty. If there's one thing that irks me the most, it's the fact that people deny science. Which is why I'll be talking about a very controversial topic today that really shouldn't be controversial, and that is global climate change. Global climate change is important. It impacts everyone on this planet, and as the U.S. Pentagon stated, it is an immediate threat to our national security. So with that being said, you should be conscientious of global climate change and the impact it will have on planet Earth. As a senior in high school, I was voted as one most likely to solve global climate change. I've done extensive <laughs> amount of research on this topic, talking to scientists and citizens alike. Um, and today I'll begin by addressing the cause for climate change. Next I'll move on to the effect that climate change has had and will have our, on planet Earth. And lastly I'll touch on a few things, that, solutions that the world and you can do to help mitigate this problem. So to begin, this graph taken from Australia's Department of the Environment shows the process of greenhouse gases, which is the cause for climate change. So first we have solar radiation that comes down from the sun and it is either reflected by our atmosphere or it is absorbed by the Earth. Then using the conservation of energy, that radiation is turned into heat and is either radiated out into space or trapped by the already present greenhouse gases that are sustained life on Earth. However, due to uh, human activities such as burning of fossil fuels, agriculture, clearing of land, we have increased the amount of greenhouse gases and most notably CO2 into our atmosphere and that has created an imbalance in energy uh, inside of our globe. Less heat is leaving Earth and more of it is staying inside. In fact, according to climatologist James Hansen in a TED Talks from March 2012, the imbalance of energy is equivalent to exploding 400,000 Hiroshima atomic bombs per day, 365 days per year. That's how much extra energy Earth is gaining each day because more, and because there are more greenhouse gases in our atmosphere, Earth is warming up. Don't believe me? Well, let's look at this. 97% of climate scientists agree that global warming is happening and is caused by humans. And out of the 13,950 peer-reviewed climate articles, 13,926 agree that climate change is happening. That's basically 100%. Actually, if we adjust the numbers, it would be 99.28. But basically 100%. Um, and also, if you don't believe me, let's look at all these scientific academies, organizations that all agree that climate change is happening. <laughs> Climate change is real. It's happening. Believe it. Okay? Now that we've gotten that over with, let's look at what effect climate change has had on our planet. To begin with, we've seen an increase in CO2 emissions, and for 650 years, CO2 has never been above 300 parts per million. We are now at 400 parts per million. The last time we were at 400 parts per million, South Dakota was an inland sea, and we had the Megalodon swimming around the Earth. Okay? In addition, from 2002 to 2014, we've seen an increase from 375 parts per million to 405. That has a correlation with an increase in temperature. As the CO2 has risen, so has the temperature. Since we've been recording since the 1880s, we've seen an increase about an average of one degree Celsius, and this has led to many different things, such as the sea level rising uh, from a, to about eight inches since the beginning of the 20th century, and this is due to the warming of the ocean. Now, when heat it's, hits water, the, mul the water molecules are expanding, so that's one reason. Another reason is the shrinking ice caps, or well, we have the glaciers that are shrinking. We also have uh, the North Pole and Antarctica, where the ice is shrinking and therefore letting more water out into our oceans. We also have seen an increase in extreme weather events, climatological events, hydrological events, meteorological events from 29 to 91, 88 to 413, 174 to 400 respectively. So those include things like extreme temperatures, drought, forest fires, flood, mass movement, tropical and local storms. So, now that we know what has happened to our planet, let's look at what will happen if we don't check our climate, um, or check our CO2 emissions. For one, if we do nothing, we could see an increase in CO2 emissions by 1,200 uh, parts per million. That's huge, okay? If we looked at our previous graph, 400 was like the max. So if we de started declining emissions by 2020, we could actually see lower emissions uh, for going to about 400 and then slightly decreasing to 300. And this was according, um, oh, let's look, to the graph created by the Representative Concentration of Pathway Database version 2.0.5. Now, <laughs> see this? We were only at 300, 400, and at this graph, that's 1,200. It's not even on the graph. Okay? 
If we don't check our carbon emissions, we can see an increase of temperatures about 4 degrees Celsius from what we have uh, previously seen. And if we started checking them now, we could just see it average out at about 1. What will this do? Well, let's look at a few cities. London, Mumbai, and this is Wall Street, or New York. At a 2 degrees Celsius increase, we would already see the city of London becoming flooded. Mumbai, half of its archway would be gone, and in Wall Street, there would be water already flooding the streets. At 4 degrees Celsius, all of London would be flooded, all of Mumbai would be flooded, and all the streets of New York would be flooded as well. And trust me, if you go into London, you do not want that to get through flooding. <laughs> okay, also, other problems that will happen is an economic loss. According to Tiffany App for CNN on November 5th, 2015, she wrote, rising sea levels means, um, from, and, hold on, rising sea levels from unchecked carbon emissions could drive more than 100 million people into extreme poverty and submerge homes for over half a billion. Think about all the cities and the towns that will be destroyed by the rising sea levels um, all the farmers' jobs will be lost to drought, and the millions of lives lost because we didn't act on climate change. So, talking about drought, there's going to be a decrease in crops. In fact, if we go leave carbon emissions unchecked, we could see a decrease in corn by negative 24 percent, a decrease in wheat by negative 3 percent, rice 11 percent, and potatoes 9 percent. Also, you're going to be seeing a harm to your health. Um, according to the National Geographic's climate issue of November 2015, crop declines will lead to undernutrition, hunger, and higher food prices. Uh, you're going to see water shortages as we're already seeing over in California. Uh, more ticks will be carrying the Lyme disease, more mosquitoes with born dengue fever, uh, longer allergy seasons, more respiratory disease, an increase in mold and fungi and indoor air pollutants, and much more. And climate change has been linked to lower coital frequency, if that's what you're into. <laughs> so, now that we see what problems lay ahead of us, let's look at ways that you and the world can act in order to mitigate climate change. You can write to your senators and representatives urging them to act on climate change. You can decrease your carbon footprint by walking, biking, taking public transport, uh, carpooling, buying an electric car, Christmas coming up, Tesla would be a great gift. Um, <laughs> As a city, what we can do is we can implement more bikeways. We can pave roads with photocatalytic concrete that would neutralize the harmful effects uh, before they are released into the environment. We could power um, our street lights and our buildings with renewable energy, such so as solar and wind. As a world, we could go toward more renewable energy, solar, wind, geothermal, hydro. We could implement CO2 removal processes, such as reforesting areas creating artificial trees that would actually take in more CO2 than regular trees, build fans that would take CO2 out of the air and convert that into carbon fibers. Um, on airplanes, we could uh, implement stratospheric aerosols that would spray sulfur dioxide into the air that would actually reflect the Earth's sunlight and put it back in the space before it comes and hits the ground. We could also geoengineer geo clouds by spewing salt water into them to make them more reflective to the sunlight. And we could genetically engineer crops so they could be more drought resistant so that when people are starving because we haven't checked our climate change, we could have food. Okay? <laughs> In conclusion, we have reviewed what causes climate change, what effects it has have, had and will have on our planet, and what you and the world can do to help solve this current problem. We need, you, we need people to take up this issue, to address our global leaders, to act on climate change now. And I'll leave you with a quote from the famous astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm often asked whether I believe in global warming. And now I just reply, do you believe in gravity? Thank you.